I welcome you in the lecture 19 regarding technology transfer through strategic alliance and the joint venture. And I am in the module of special purpose vehicle and specifically I will talk with you relating to the risk management and SPV. Now I have uh, talked with you about the risk disclosure in my previous lecture and uh, risk is a very important factor for any venture to go ahead. Now, when you talk about the risks, risks means uh, nothing more than uh, risks are nothing more than a variables or the circumstances associated with the implementation of specific project that have the potential to adversely affect the development of project or interest of the participant as the case may be. So, this is you know kind of uh, understanding relating to the risks. Now, the understanding of the risks or the business risks is gradually increasing over the years and people are uh, you know defining the risks for a particular segment or sector of the business. Now, initially we never bothered about these particular risks because we thought that risks is basically the issue which need to be managed by the people who are operating this particular joint venture or the managers who are involved in day to day operation of uh, uh, the joint venture. But it is found that you know over the years that risks are need to be managed and risks are need to be allocated among the group of people who are involved into that particular joint venture. So, it is uh, always advisable that you should plan the risks at the time of entering into the joint venture and even in the later stage when you are operating the joint venture organization or the company which has uh, incorporated out of that particular joint venture agreement. And then you see that how much risks will be absorbed or what are the risks will be absorbed by the SPV, what are the risks he, he is going to be carried by those people who are promoted the SPV or joint venture partner or strategic alliance partner or even if it is a PPP model then in that case if the government is also a partner in this particular thing how much the government will take and if there is anything left out then who is going to bear this particular risks. So, uh, you know management of the risks is no more uh, management in absolute term but it is basically come into the legal domain and we try to sort out this particular issue through the matter of agreement or the process of agreement and many of the time you will find that to managing the risks we also enter into underwriting agreement. So, uh, important uh, thing is that as I said that uh, you need to you know allocate the risks to the different uh, people in, in this particular joint venture. Uh, herein the important issue is that you should identify that particular risks. The first is the determination of the main factor that added to the risks related to that particular project. So, you know there might be several factor which is uh, basically uh, you know added to that particular project or risks which is added to the project. And it might be uh, related it, 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 it might be a several thing it might be like you know geopolitical risks it might be the financial risks it might be the uh, you know exchange risks it might be relating to the operation risks it might be the regulatory risks it might be the uh, you know the political risks which is there. So, whatever this particular risks are then you need to identify that and that is a very conscious decision I am possibly going to speak more on this in my subsequent part of the lecture. Then you need to look into the factors that uh, go towards supporting the project should be identified because that is a positive part of uh, the issue and which also give you kind of uh, leverage against this management of the risks. So, you should try to understand while you are executing the project that how much risks is involved, what uh, what risks can be managed and what are the leverage you are going to get uh, in that particular project if you can manage those particular risks. So, positive or supporting point you should also identify. Then you should talk about the adequate measure for formulating to ensure the food utilization of the factor that goes towards the supporting of implementation of the project. Please do remember 
any business venture is not always a very soothing venture. Like uh, this particular lecture, we were uh, more on technology transfer through the joint venture and we, we are interested more on how to incorporate that, uh, you know, uh, how to absorb the technology through the process of the joint venture. And in those particular cases, the risks are very high. I have discussed with you this particular risk factor when I was talking with you a joint venture and therein I said that uh, there, there might be several issues once this particular technology transfer happen in a particular market. It might be that you know the consumer behavior uh, which, which reject this particular technology or the technology uh, cannot be directly implemented into that particular market. You need to customize that particular technology. There might be a several regulatory barrier which you need to overcome. There might be some kind of a political, uh, you know, uh, uh, issues relating to particular issue, uh, particular aspect. Uh, like you know, some point of time in India, you know, people used to feel threatened to bring the information technology because people used to think that you know, the moment information technology will be brought in India, people will going to lose the job. And that is the reason you will find it has become a political agenda and uh, for a long period of time many of the state government did not allow this uh, information technology to penetrate in that particular state. So, you know it can be a several thing and, and then in that circumstances you need to find out what are the supporting issue uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for your uh, venture. Now, uh, uh, you should uh, 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 you know, consider certain question before uh, in the assessment of the risks. Uh, you should, uh, you know, ask that that where this uncertainty associated with the project coming from. So that has to be very clear to you that from where this particular risk is coming, and uh, and next you need to talk about the causative factor, and then how you can, uh, you know, handle with this particular causative factor or what are the protection you can take into this particular causative factor. Because I, if you remember, I just talked a uh, little before to you that sometimes you need to allocate the risks to the different people who are associated with this particular, uh, you know, venture. Like it can be, so it can be allocated to the uh, sponsor, it can be allocated to uh, the uh, SPB or sometimes you, you might even like to allocate that particular risk to the underwriter that means who are not party to this particular entire venture, but who is having the business only to uh, you know underwrite the risks and they get the premium out of that particular uh, process. Now you need to look into that what are the counter measures that can be taken to counter and uh, mitigate that particular uh, risks and is causative factor which I have uh, talked with you. And then you know party which is the best position to undertake that is also I told you that uh, you know who, who can take this particular risk, uh, risk uh, you know in a better. Now in case of the technology transfer one thing you should uh, you know keep in the mind uh, even the legal environment. Many of the time uh, the, the people who are transferring the technology they are not sure about the protection of the technology uh, protection of uh, the intellectual property they are going to get in the country where they are transferring the technology. So, in that circumstances if there is a infringement and uh, you know uh, if, if you if you uh, you know sustain the loss because of this particular infringement then how you are going to manage this particular entire issue that you need to uh, you know decide either you are going to hold uh, either going to you are going to solve it through uh, kind of. Uh, agreement process or arbitration or you are going to go for embracing of uh, another country's uh, you know law which is more protective about the technology or you might uh, look for a escrow account wherein you wanted to have a better protection or try to get a better protection. So, whatever uh, the way you want to you know protect it you should be uh, you know clear about that and you should try to try to try to design design it around so that you can have adequate protection to the uh, uh, rigs. Now, uh, uh, you can also need to talk about that what can 
go wrong uh, with the measures taken to counter or intimate the risks and so you know you need to have a plan b so if you find that you know plan a is not working relating to the mitigating of the risks or balancing of the risks then you need to have a plan b through which you can really uh, you know uh, mitigate the risks or you can really control the situation if it is goes uh, beyond uh, beyond uh, uh, the circumstances so what i did uh, here i basically uh, you know indicated the kind of risks which we generally try to handle through the legal process uh, the the first one is you will find the pure risks which is very which is quite identifiable that means you are sure about that you are going to uh, exposed to this particular risk the moment you have decided to go for this particular venture. Now, there is a some risks which are particular risks to a particular business like uh, if you are uh, interested to go for joint venture in power production, there is a possibility that the power which you produce uh, uh, may not be absorbed in your entire capacity. because uh, the local demand is less or you are not been allowed to connect it with the national grid because of some kind of a local uh, regulation. So, these are the particular risks because you know that this particular risk is available uh, before you go for this thing. Now, there is a something which is called a fundamental risk. Fundamental risk is uh, which is fundamental in that type of transaction which you are doing like you know if you uh, uh, dependent on the uh, exchange rate when you are bringing the technology. Then in that case there is a always possibility that exchange rate will change and that is a fundamental to that particular business. Many of the time because of the exchange rate you will find the entire business plan get upset and there is a cost overrun and uh, you know there is a uh, uh, there is a issues relating to the creditors uh, uh, might say that you know whatever the projection was there the the uh, you know venture did not able to address that particular projection so much so thing has happened there is a something which is called a speculative breaks which you which uh, which is not very clear to you but you can speculate like uh, you know change in the common and government interest and it is very uh, you know uh, important whenever you are uh, going for a business which is having a, a longer gestation uh, like you know today the government think that uh, you know in a particular sector there should be a lot of focus and the policies and the regulation and the law is aligned towards that and tomorrow the government might uh, there is a change in the government and the new government might think in a different manner relating to that particular sector. Like let me give you example today you will find the present government is giving a lot of uh, emphasis relating to defense manufacture or uh, you know manufacturing the defense equipment in India itself instead of public procurement. But tomorrow there might be another government uh, or the new government who might think that well uh, defense production in India or exporting the defense product from India is not a very good sector or uh, they might uh, simply change their focus in some other sector. And please remember in some of the sector to setting up the manufacturer uh, facility or uh, to have uh, kind of uh, 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 you know this technology absorption in that particular sector takes a long time. So, in those particular cases you need to be careful about the speculative rigs and whatever I talked with you about the pure rigs, particular rigs, fundamental rigs, speculative rigs, you should decide that who is going to handle this particular rigs or if there is a number of risks under this different heading how many risks will be allocated to whom or rather to put it in other way around who is in a better position to handle the risks and accordingly you should uh, enter into an agreement or you should frame your joint venture uh, uh, agreement or maybe you should incorporate the clauses 
in the memorandum of association of article of association of uh, SPV. Now, let me take you to uh, next issue aspect of analyzing uh, analyze while identifying the risks each aspect of the project like you know if it is a power project some uh, various aspect like uh, fuel supply generation station power produce and transmission of the power so you know some of this aspect which are uh, pretty uh, you know identify with the particular uh, project so that which i was talking about which, which is basically uh, you know particular rigs so you should you should know this particular thing now another important thing is that there can be a stages of uh, rigs like you know some of the some of the rigs might come when you are going for a, a, a pre execution that means when you are planning to put up the project because please remember uh, which i have discussed with you spb is only a vehicle vehicle of uh, you know executing a particular project which you wanted to uh, do through the joint venture so while you are putting that particular uh, project there may be you know pre uh, 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 pre project rigs or at the planning stage there might be rigs there might be a rigs at the time of a commissioning stage and then there might be rigs at the stage of operation so whatever this particular stage again as i have discussed with you with the particular rigs you need to identify this stage rigs also and then you need to allocate that who are the better person to handle this particular uh, rigs in a different stage. And uh, you know the rigs as I told you may be related to a particular industry where you wanted to enter or the segment where you wanted to enter. Now um, herein I have basically list out some of these particular rigs, but please remember these are not an exhaustive list. It can be, you know, uh, varied according to the business, or it can be varied according to, you know, a sector where you are entering into the business. Like it can be the geographical location, it can be the legal framework to of that particular sector. It might be, uh, you know, which I was talking about the regulatory risks. If you remember, a uh, few minutes back. Uh, then it can be the basis of the commercial feasibility of that particular project might be you know which I have talked with you while I was discussing with you uh, joint venture that you might have an excellent idea or you know you might feel that you know it is commercially highly feasible but when you have brought this particular project you found that uh, people are not really accepting. Now, it is not very relevant into this particular, uh, you know, matter relating to the technology transfer through joint venture. But let me uh, tell you for your understanding of this particular commercial feasibility. Like, you know, when Ratan Tata conceived the idea of Nano, Ratan Tata thought that, well, Nano will be the best car for Indian uh, people because it is very economic, it is uh, uh, fuel efficient and it will take a less space for the parking or maybe less space it can enter into the small lane uh, which uh, India generally have in the different cities. But you will find ultimately you know people do not like this particular car at the end of the day and they are struggling with this particular car even to come that. So you know commercial feasibility may, may come uh, uh, I mean uh, commercial feasibility setback may come for a different reason. Some people are telling that uh, it has been projected as a cheap car and that is what uh, you know created the impression in the mind of the people and people did not like this particular branding. Now there should be proper structure for implementation of the project political scenario is very important and as I have discussed to you that you know once there is a change in the government there my you might uh, feel uh, get the upset into your project or maybe you know if there is a strong political oppositions are there who are agitating over this particular project they might uh, try to upset the project or joint venture uh, project. So, uh, you know, political risk is uh, pretty high in some some cases of uh, you know the joint ventures, uh, uh, and uh, this is pretty high in case of the technology because I've given the example of uh, importing the information technology few minutes before. 
then economic factor might affecting the project and economic factor may be a range of things right from uh, getting the investment in time, uh, getting the lending in time, it might be relating to currency fluctuation, it might be relating to the inflow of uh, money uh, after providing the service, so much so forth. Now, uh, in the last, I have basically categorized some pre execution and post execution risks. And again, these are not exhaustive list, but it can give you kind of uh, uh, you know understanding to you and you might feel how to handle this particular risk. It might increase in a cost uh, rejection of a proposal by the concerned uh, government authority. It might be the litigation, um, it might be you know litigation relating to the intellectual property. All of a sudden, you find that you know somebody has filed. Uh, litigation against you by telling that it is uh, infringement of their uh, product or you know somebody might go to the competition commission and say that you know by bringing this particular technology they are trying to polarizing the market or this bringing of this particular technology and creating the joint venture might adversely impact over the market. So, delay obtaining the re requisition permission to uh, commence the project and again it might be from the local government and you know in the recent times you might have seen the lot of delays are happening because of uh, permission from the environmental regulator. Find a suitable equity investor for the project vehicle, uh, uh, you might need for a more equity invention a, a infusion in the different stages and you have thought that while well, you are going to take this equity investor uh, you know as you go ahead and then there is a setback into this particular thing change in government and government policy as I told you. And in the post execution it can uh, you might be renew rigs, uh, it might be uh, you know construction rigs, financial rigs, legal rigs, there can be a force majority and it can be as I have told you it can be a design risks, operation risks, political risks, environmental risks. So, you know uh, here and if you look into this particular thing some somewhere it is uh, indicated like construction and designing risks, these are more uh, in those particular area which are, uh, are related to the infrastructure or maybe heavy machineries, but uh, you, you know other cases other risks which I have listed out here these are uh, in generic nature and it can affect the any segment. So, uh, the risks might put down the SPV and you should uh, very consciously manage this particular risk factor when you are planning for a joint venture or when you are incorporating a SPV for technology transfer or you know uh, you know develop, uh, developing the product out of that technology transfer thank you